Am I the antagonist for refusing to change my last name? My mother passed away before I was ten. My uncle, mother's elder brother, took me in and raised me because my father by then had already started a new life and a new family. My uncle treated me very well, though I'm not sure if my aunt feels the same about me as he did. My uncle and aunt had an only son who's around my age, and what he had I had it too. For example, if my uncle got cousin a laptop he would get me one too, and they would be the same worth. My uncle even got me a car for my 18th birthday. My cousin also treated me just like his own brother. Needless to say, I am very grateful to have them in my life. Everything I have and that I am is owed to them. However, my relationship with my uncle has hit a slight snag recently. In my culture, it's usually the parents who will help with purchasing a home for their sons when they get married. The reason is because people in my culture tend to marry young, but most of the time we would not have worked long enough to save up enough for even the down payment. For a man not to have a marital home is considered a disadvantage and the women's family may not accept the proposed union. So a man having a marital home is very important. In my case, because my mother has passed away and my father is an absent parent, my uncle and aunt are my de facto parents. Indeed, my uncle said he would buy me a marital home. However, he has set a condition for that I have to change my last name to his. Last names are a big deal in my culture so this is not something that is taken lightly. My uncle said since he's been like a father to me rather than my own father, and also as a remembrance to my mother, I should change my last name to his, which is also my mother's. So basically, no change in last name equals no marital home. I expressed to him that this is an unfair demand because like I said, last names are a huge deal in my culture and a change could trigger uncomfortable questions from people. But my uncle insisted that if I refused to change my last name, I would have to buy the marital home on my own, which is impossible because I'm a fresh grad and it could take me years to even save up for the down payment. This could seriously set me back in terms of a romantic relationship and future marriage. Because of our disagreement, things between my uncle and I have become awkward. So far, my aunt and cousin have not said anything to me, but a group of close friends whom I have confided to told me I'm the A.H. I'm surprised by their reaction, because other than this I had never gone against my uncle. I am also very thankful to my uncle and what he had done for me, and I would gladly take up the responsibility alongside my cousin to take care of him in his old age. It is just that I really don't think I should be forced into making a fundamental identity change and be punished for not doing it. Am I the antagonist? YTA He's done everything for you out of kindness, but he's not obligated to do everything for you. He's not your actual father, so he's not duty-bound to help you with your house. If you think he is duty-bound, then he is your father and you should understand why he wants you to share his name. You can't have it both ways. NTA for wanting to keep your name. YTA for arbitrarily expecting him to pay for your house. He's offering a reconciliation that if you're enough of his child to take his name, then you're enough of a child to receive house assistance, and it's not an unfair offer. It's also one you can take or leave at your own discretion. YTA, it sounds like you are in a culture where face is very important, as are familial ties and status. Your uncle is willing to put himself out there and do for you what a father would do. It's reasonable for him to want to adopt you and share in your future success. It is also reasonable for you to want to hold on to your family's name, but that choice has consequences too. Your uncle does not owe you a marital home. Your uncle does not owe you the kindness he's showing, so do not take it for granted. If you do not want to protect his face and let him share your success, you have a moral duty to refuse the offer and say you are honored, but want to make your own way. If you want to go according to culture, then he doesn't have to buy you a house either since he's not your dad. Can't pick and choose what parts of your culture you find acceptable when he's been nothing but good to you. Am I the antagonist for refusing to invite a childhood friend to my birthday? My birthday is in a few weeks. My mom and I went out for Bloody Marys yesterday and ran into someone she used to be friends with. I'll call her Wendy. 
Wendy has a daughter, Lenny, and when I was a kid, I was forced to be friends with Lenny. Apparently, we're the same age, but she always acted babbyish, which kind of annoyed me. When I was like 12-ish, I stopped going when my mom would do stuff with them. Well, she stopped dragging me along. Wendy started going on and on about how she can't believe how her daughter and I are both grown now. My mom said, yeah, her, my, birthday is coming up and I can't believe how old she is. Wendy asked if I was doing anything for my birthday. I assumed she was just making conversation so said meeting with some friends and going to different bars. Then she said, well, Lenny just moved back to town and is looking to meet people. Maybe she can meet up with you on your birthday. I just said, I'm not sure where we'll be and when so. She said, then give me your number and I'll give it to Lenny so she can call or text you to see where you are. I said, in no way holes here. That's okay. Maybe some other time really hoping she'd take a hint. She said, no, no, this is perfect. Meet up with an old friend and meet new people. Just give me your number. I sort of sighed and said, look, I don't really want her to go when we were kids and I was forced to hang out with her. I don't consider her a childhood friend. Wendy looked at my mom and my mom said, you weren't really forced, just encouraged. Wendy said, sorry, I was just trying to help you guys reconnect. Lenny doesn't have many people to hang out with since all her old friends moved on. Have a good birthday. Then walked away. My mom said I was unnecessarily rude and should have just given her my number and not answered her call slash text if I didn't want Lenny there. I feel like I was trying to be nice about it and she didn't get it so I had to be blunt. Am I the antagonist? NTA You tried to discourage it twice. Wendy kept pushing. NTA Leading her on and then ghosting her would have just made it worse. It wouldn't have ended things either, I'm sure. The mother would eventually ask about it again, and it would be brought up in conversation, and then you'd have to lie again? There's no use. I think it was brave and smart of you to just be honest. NTA. You handled this very well. You told her twice that you didn't want to, and was polite about it. Third time, you had to be more blunt. That's fine. Mom and her friend were out of line after you said no the first time. It's not your job to entertain someone you didn't even really get along with just because they're moving back. Mom's opinion is wrong too. You'd have just hurt Lenny in the end with essentially ghosting her if she did reach out by text by just ignoring her. The way you went about it was fine. No one's expecting a response slash answer. No one's waiting on a message that would have never come. Happy early birthday. You tried as hard as possible to help her get the hint. It just happened to get to an uncomfortable spot and you stood your ground. As someone who struggles with assertiveness, that's awesome for you. It's your life. You get to decide who you want at your party. Am I the antagonist for refusing to take money from my son's college fund for my stepson even though he does not need it? I have two sons from a previous marriage, Sam and Trent. When Sam went to college, I had saved up a good amount of money for both of them, but when you divide it by half, it is not enough to graduate debt-free. Trent asked Sam to take his share of the fund and to use it so that he could graduate debt-free. Sam promised to return the money to Trent, and if not, he would help with Trent's loans. True to his word, Sam slowly saved up to repay his brother, and so did I. By the time Trent went to college five years after Sam, we had enough to pay fully for Trent too. Trent ended up getting a scholarship and did not use much of the money we saved up. So, Sam and I put it in a savings account in Trent's name for future use. I have recently gotten engaged to Elizabeth, who has a 16 years old son, Will. We have recently gotten around to finances and merging them and Elizabeth suggested that I could use the money Trent was not using to pay for Will's college. Will does not have any sort of savings. His father is not in picture, and as a single mom, Elizabeth was not able to save much. I do not have much money in savings right now as I started contributing more to my retirement after Trent went to college. I vehemently refused. In my opinion, that's Trent's money, and he can do with it as he pleases. Elizabeth is very mad that I would let one of my kids go into severe debt when it can be avoided. 
She accused me of being unfair and that I am already treating my stepson differently to my biological sons. The fight has gotten so bad that at this point, I just wanted a third-person perspective on this. I understand that I need to help Will. On one hand, Trent is not using it and Will could use the money, but on the other hand, that is Trent's money and it does not feel right to ask him to give it up. Edit, even if I start saving now, it is very doubtful that I can save up enough to cover everything. I could ask Trent, but I really don't want to do that. I would rather help Will with his debts than touching Trent's savings. I just don't know if I am doing the right thing. NTA. That's Trent's money. It was saved up by both your and Sam's hard work for the purpose of sending Trent to college, and then it was agreed by both of you to put it aside for Trent. If Elizabeth wants to use that argument of it being yours, it's Sam's money then too. Not only that, it's in Trent's name. It legally belonged to him the moment it was transferred into his account. It sucks she couldn't do this for her son, but she shouldn't be expecting you to pay for it just because she wasn't able to save up for her own son. NTA The Sam slash Trent deal went down long before Will appeared on the scene, right? There's no way that money is anyone but Trent's. And man, kudos to you for raising sons who look out for each other the way they did. NTA The money belongs to Trent. And possibly unpopular opinion here, but of course you treat your soon-to-be stepson differently. You met him as a teenager, whereas you knew your sons from infancy. How on earth would anyone expect you to have the same bond with Will already? That's Trent's money and giving it to Will would be a massive betrayal to Trent. But you already know that. Elizabeth is the one that needs to understand that. Am I the antagonist for scaring my boyfriend and his brother by going missing when my they repeatedly left my friend and I behind on a hike? I had plans with my boyfriend Jack, his brother Tyler, and my friend Paula to go hiking last weekend. I'd suggested an easier flatter trail for us to hike, since Paula isn't as experienced a hiker as the rest of us. I thought the plan was to just hike together and hang out and talk, but the day of, we started at a normal pace and the guys just kept going faster. Paula was lagging behind kinda out of breath and I stuck with her eye irritated because a huge rule of wilderness safety is to stay with your group. Because shit can go sideways fast in the backcountry they were stopping to wait every mile or so, we never knew where because they didn't say and nobody had cell service. But as soon as we caught up they'd start going at top speed again leaving us playing catch up nonstop. I told Jack that I'd like them to stick with us, and he complained that we were too slow, the trail was too easy, they needed their workout. After the third time they ran off, Paula and I got to this viewpoint before the main peak. So we sat down to take our first breather in hours and vent. She joked that we should stop chasing and let them wonder. I suggested we just hang out at the viewpoint until the guys noticed or found us on the way back down. She pulled out a joint she'd been planning on sharing at the top of the mountain, and we hung out and smoked and ate our lunch. It was an hour and a half before the guys came back. We heard them before we saw them. They were sprinting down the trail yelling our names. I called out over here except I was coughing from smoking so it sounded more like off cough cough ere the guys came running to the viewpoint and Paula was giggling her ass off at my attempt to yell. I got the giggles from her and the joint we'd just finished, too. The guys confused our giggling for crying since we were both just kind of wheezing with laughter and were asking what happened. I was like we're okay we're just high. Tyler got really mad at us saying they had stopped off a half mile from the summit to wait for us before making the final push and after we didn't show up for an hour they decided to turn back to look for us instead of summiting. And he was furious that we just stopped to get high without telling them. I was like I thought we split up, like y'all were off doing your own thing all day and my boyfriend raised his voice at me telling me that you don't split up a group without communication. At that, Paula and I got the giggles again. Like no shit it was just funny how he was saying the same thing I'd been saying all day. For the rest of the hike, the guys were angry with us because we ruined their summit, making them turn back just because we didn't even try to keep up. Am I the antagonist for going missing on a hike? NTA. 
You told Jack and Tyler repeatedly what the issue was. They ignored you and did their own thing. You and Paula finally gave up trying to win a losing game. I hike. You adjust your route to fit the weakest hiker, not the strongest. Duh. The guys could have had their workout on a different day. Different hike. Instead, they chose to abandon you and Paula over and over again. You didn't ruin anything. I don't blame you a bit for taking care of yourselves. Trying to keep up with those two could have ended up with exhaustion or getting lost. Getting rescued isn't always free either. HTTPS colon slash slash blog dot dot com slash out dash there slash outdoor dash rescues dash pays dash bill. Your boyfriend and his pal foolishly, selfishly, and deservedly ruined their own trip. NTA, I'm an experienced hiker with asthma and the slowest person sets the pace, aka me. If the guys wanted a workout, they should have said so in the planning stage, not on the trail with a friend who physically can't keep up. NTA. They didn't consider yours or Paula's needs for a single minute. They just wanted to bro up. If a real incident happened to you, you'd be screwed because they fucked up. And you're more likely to fuck up trying to keep up with a pace you can't maintain. They left you behind, didn't check to see if you were okay, and were too interested in their workout. It's not like you left the trail either. How long does it take to hike a mile? Fifteen-ish minutes, give or take, and all they had to do was turn around and backtrack to find you which took them 1.5 hours. Next time you guys should determine the goal of the hike is for fun or is it a timed workout? Am I the antagonist for telling my mom a lot of people will feel the same as me about my stepsister because not everyone will love her? My mom married her husband when I was 12. He had a two-year-old daughter at the time who had no mom. So my mom fell madly for her as well and considers this kid her child too. I never had anything against her back then, but I won't pretend I started caring about her all that much either or that I saw her as my sister. My mom and her husband spoil her rotten and have allowed her to become a very demanding kid. She will tell people what to do and will scream if you don't follow what she wants. This started when she was like four and has gotten worse in the last four years. She will demand someone play tea parties with her, and if they say no, screams at the top of her lungs at you she tells you to put something on TV, and if you don't, same response with the screaming wants a piggyback ride and is told no, screaming oh so loud at the park and wants to be the only one on the slide, screams she's had several notes sent home from school with complaints about this. My mom and her husband even got called in at the end of this past school year to talk about how they feel she needs to mature and have this behavior nipped in the bud. I find her so annoying that I do my best to avoid her now, which is easier since I moved out. Not too long ago, my mom was asking if I would be coming home on weekends when my training starts and I told her I probably wouldn't. She asked why and I said because I was busy. She suggested they could come and stay with me for a weekend. I told her not to. She asked me why. I told her I didn't want her stepdaughter in my apartment. She told me she's my little sister and misses me and I should spend some time with her. I said no way holes here and pointed out her behavior. She told me how wrong it was to feel that way about her and I said I'm not the only one and I won't be. I told her the difference is she and her husband love her but not everyone will and then her behavior will just keep getting doors shut in her face. As it is she had several birthday party invites rescinded from January to May this year. My mom told me saying I don't love her is awful and that I have known her most of her life and she has adored me since day one. She said she was ashamed of how cold I could be to the kid. I don't think she really gets it, but maybe she's right. Am I the antagonist? You are not the a-hole. Your mom and stepdad are being really short-sighted. No one is going to want to be around your stepsister and it's all their fault. NTA. I don't understand how people think others are horrible for genuinely not wanting to be around poorly behaved kids. Or kids at all. They're raising a brat. Plain and simple. If my math's right, and I didn't miss something, she should be eight. By now she should be able to accept no as an answer. 
If it continues, she's going to have a heck of a time in the next few years. Todd, I went to school with a kid like your stepsister for a year. That was the year we all stopped having birthday parties because we would all rather not have a party at all than have to have her there. Nobody wanted to sit beside her. We had two and two tables. The teacher tried to say I had to sit with her because I was the most easygoing person in class. That was the first time I ever straight up told the teacher no. I said I'd rather get detention or just not come to school than sit with her, and I loved school. She ended up sitting alone in front of the teacher's desk so they could intervene the second she started her BS. She never had anyone willingly partnering with her in anything no matter the class or subject. Play and breaks would stop pretty much the second she forced her way into the games, because unless we let her win she'd be screaming and crying within a minute or two. Everyone in the class sighed in relief when she didn't return the next year. Teachers included, I suspect. We bloody hated her. Unless your parents are so loaded they can afford for her to buy friends, then they are raising her to be lonely and hated. Your mom and stepdad clearly need this tough love advice. You're right. If allowed to continue this sort of behavior will affect her negatively and make her life hard. Not to mention make her really difficult to deal with and overly sensitive to rejection and adversity. She needs to learn to hear the word no. Am I the antagonist for telling my wife our daughter is more important than she is? Our daughter is turning 18 in October. She a great kid, always pulled straight A's, never in any type of trouble, and she's very respectful. My wife recently decided to have a talk with her about adult responsibilities. I had no knowledge of this conversation until my daughter came to me crying because she was scared about living on her own. I was confused at first, then she told me her mother said she needs to start looking for a job because she'll be expected to get her own place after her birthday. I was appalled because we never discussed throwing her out at 18. When I confronted my wife, she said our daughter wasn't a child anymore and needed our push to become an adult. I told her I was really baffled that she would exclude me from such a serious decision slash conversation. I asked my wife how does she expect our kid to make it on minimum wage, especially considering the rent is out of control in our area. She then informs me she had planned for us to pay half her rent until she was 20. I asked her why she wanted our kid gone so bad. As the argument intensified, I believe she slipped by saying she needed the space, her bedroom, for her art studio. I couldn't believe it. I told my wife if her hobby was more important than our daughter, she should be the one looking to rent. However, she took that as me saying move out, but that's not how I meant it. I was implying for her to rent more space for her studio and to leave our daughter alone. She didn't believe that's what I actually meant. She then gave me the silent treatment for three days. Our daughter, however, was still upset as she processed her mother wanting her out. She realized moving into a rental meant she had to leave her two cats behind. She's had these cats since she was a young child that alone devastated her. She told me, I don't want to turn 18. I don't want to celebrate my birthday. I picked the argument back up with my wife at that point. I said, our daughter isn't moving out until she decides on her own terms because she is more important than you or your hobby. She looked stunned, and maybe in the heat of the moment I didn't choose my words wisely. I couldn't bear to see our daughter so upset any longer. I don't want her struggling to make ends meet and not be able to follow her dreams. The last thing I want for her is to feel rushed. As far as my wife goes, she's not talking to me at all and she's been cold towards our daughter. NTA. This is the hill to die on. You weren't that far off when you said maybe your wife should rent instead. How unbelievably cruel she is to her own child to prioritize an art room over her daughter. I don't want to get banned, so that's all I will say. NTA. Your wife is. While 18 may very well be the age you become an adult, 18 is not an age where most people are prepared to live on their own. Your wife is absolutely T.A. because she should have had a conversation with you before arbitrarily making an absolutely asinine decision. It may be time to take a good hard look at your marriage. Putting an art studio ahead of a child's welfare and well-being is ludicrous. Edit, 
OP, if you have not thought about planning for the unexpected, you should. Please make sure you have a wool in place to protect your daughter. Life happens. Additionally, think about some therapy to help deal with any anxiety. Turning 18 should be a happy time for her. NTA, does she even like her daughter? The fact that your wife made this decision and had that conversation without having it with you first makes her a major AH. And while you may not have meant it the way she took it, it's 100% spot on with both meanings.